Annyeong! Welcome to Ella Sessions! This is my first video tutorial to all of you. Today, we will tackle Excel workbooks. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated for more videos that are coming up. So, let's start! For mastering Excel keyboard shortcuts, we should master first or maybe understand first the whole Excel workbook, how it works, what do you call this or that. Microsoft Excel is a very useful tool to everyone not just for a business and knowing it before loving it is the best way to start first we should open excel go to start look for excel and click on it this way once opened you will see the Excel window. We have here the Excel blank workbook as well as the templates you previously used. Welcome to Excel, drop-down tutorial, formula tutorial, and power query tutorial. But for now, please watch my tutorials first. Then below, you will see your previously saved workbooks. And on the left-hand corner, you will see File Options. This will only appear if you are working on a new workbook. So let's click on the blank workbook now. There you go. First, we shall know what are these white rectangles on the entire worksheet. So these are called cells. It is the intersection between a row and a column. A cell is referenced by a column, letter, and a row number. The example shown is cell B3, which you can see right here at the name box. So this cell that is currently selected is what you call the active cell, while the small green square here is what you call a fill handle. When you go hover on it, it will give us a plus sign which we can double click to perform an auto fill. But it will only work of course if there are data present. So let's do it. Um, we have here one and we put something here at the side and then we do it there as you can see there is a small box this is the autofill options it includes copy cells fill series fill formatting only and fill form we fill without formatting and also the flash fill. We can know more about flash fills on the next videos, but for now, I will just show you around the Excel workbook. The main menu bar at the top of the Excel screen is what we call ribbon. A ribbon is consist of several tabs. So the home tab has the, some of the most frequently used tools. 
As you can see, we have here clipboard where we can find the most widely used tools. We've, we have here font where you can change your font styles, styles, your size and colors. Corridors is also present here. Also, we have the alignment of your data, the number, where you can change it into various formats and add or delete decimals, styles, we can change here the style of our cell or format a table or perform some conditional formatting, cells where we can insert delete and format a cell and finally editing where we can find the auto sum the next tab is the insert tab under it we have our tables where we can see the table and the pivot tables illustrations where you can add shapes pictures pictures on the web we have the add-ins charts that you can use to analyze your data tours spark lines this one is very useful for visual representation of data say for example for trend analysis filters where we have this slicer this one is used to filter a pivot table. Links, text, and symbols. Then under page layout, we have here the themes where you can change the theme that gives your document an instant style. Page setup where you can select on how it will appear on the page or on how it will be printed. You can also scale to fit it. Sheet options, where if you want to also print the grid lines on your um, PDF file or on the output that you will be printing. Or the headings, you can just stick on it. But for now, I will untick it and then arrange also we have here formulas under formulas is a function library defined names this is very useful if you are doing some complex calculations then formula auditing this allows you to display the relationship between formulas and cells and the calculation this is useful when you have a large data in an Excel workbook. An Excel workbook is by default automatically computes a given formula. So you can choose to do it manually. Here. Um, here. See? We also have the data. Get and transform data, which is useful for extraction of the data from text. CSV file and you convert to an Excel file from the web where you can also extract files directly from it. And we also have queries and connections, sort and filter, which is very useful. See, for me, I usually use it in pivot tables. What I notice is it is it is widely used by people under human resource department. <laughs> then data tools, we can do data validations here, where you can control what the user can enter into a cell. Forecast and the outline where we can group certain cells and also ungroup them. We also have the review. We, under it are proofing, accessibility, 
insights, language, comments, and protect. This one, you can either protect a sheet or a workbook to maintain confidentiality or if you just not want someone to mess up your workbook. We also have here the ink. But I seldom use this review tab. <laughs> As you know, I previously worked in finance environment and I usually use formulas and data tabs. Next, view where we have workbook views, show where you can choose to show the grid lines or not. You untick this one or the formula bar, but for me, formula bar is very vital so I just leave it ticked. It's up to you, but if you are done with your computations, you can untick it. The formula is just right here. And the headings, of course, you can untick also that one, but as you can see, it is hard. You don't have columns, you don't have rows. It's hard to see which cell are you in. I am comfortable using or having headings on my spreadsheet <clears throat> then window here we have here the switch windows this is very useful if you have so many workbooks to work on like 10 workbooks and you don't have to switch on the the switch switch on different workbooks using Altab it's very it's it's not comfy and then you'll notice I have here the developer tab where we can do our macros where is my macros here we can do the macros here this is used to automate the tasks yeah that that you frequently do by recording it so I have this because I took the specialization course at Coursera and we've used it. So in order to add or remove it to your ribbon, just go to File and look for Options, then Customize Ribbon. Then you can see here some popular commands that you can also add to your to your ribbon <clears throat> and the developer tab is just right here you can untick this one so that you can remove the developer tab if you will not use it but now I will untick that one because I will not use it anymore we have help or there's help and community there you go so you have the ribbon then we have here the columns that are listed in letters there and we have 16,384 columns in an Excel spreadsheet an Excel spreadsheet ends with column XFD while in a row they are counted in numbers, so there are yeah, 1,048,576 rows in an Excel spreadsheet. This is the end of the spreadsheet, so you cannot add any more. We also have here the status bar. This is what you call the status bar. It is below the spreadsheet where you can find several useful areas. The zoom tool, the zoom tool, where you can drag that one if you'd like. Access to different view options. 
and as well as by default several calculation results which display dynamically whenever data is selected in the spreadsheet so I will just show you that one I have to open my sample item You just drag it and you can see here the totals. You have the average, the count, and the sum of it. So this is your entire Excel file and it is called a workbook. The file name of each workbook is at the top of the file window. So this is the file name, sample itinerary. And the workbook is consists of several worksheets. So for this one, I only have two sheets. But you can freely add, uh, you can freely add or redact worksheets here. So, these worksheets, it, it is called, often called sheets only. If you want to name your worksheets, just right on the work, right click on the worksheet and you look for a name. So, for now, I will. then enter to add more worksheet just click on the plus sign just right next to the last worksheet tab there because I renamed my itinerary my sheet 1 itinerary the added worksheet was sheet 1 let's see again see it's sheet 3. And there you go. That is our Excel workbook. Simple but sweet. You should know firsthand the terminologies that we have discussed here because we will be using it to our next videos. So you will not be lost. Please comment down below what else do you want to know about Microsoft Excel and I'll try my best to share it with you guys. See you guys and I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Bye!